What's going on YouTube? Chiosno right here. So in today's video we have some important things to discuss. For those of you interested in the iOS 14.4.2, 14.4.1 and 14.4 jailbreak. Apple released yesterday the iOS 14.5 and iPadOS 14.5 and these are full of vulnerability patches. So this means that the previous versions like 14.4.1, 14.4.2 and of course 14.4 do have these vulnerabilities which we can use for a jailbreak. If you take a look in here on the security changes it's actually quite a lot including one for Apple mobile file integrity by Segusa and it says in here quote a malicious application may be able to bypass privacy preferences this is not exactly important for a jailbreak but it goes to show how big of a security change iOS 14.5 really is so the important ones are actually the kernel ones which we can find down here there's quite a couple of them as you can see so there's a lot to choose from but there is even one from Pangu themselves you can see that they have in here quote a a local user may be able to read kernel memory and this one is by Pangu team. If you don't remember who Pangu was, they're basically doing security research now on iOS and many other devices, but they used to make the Pangu jailbreak, which many people probably remember, but many people probably remember the older version as well, which is this one. They used to have this logo here. Now they no longer make jailbreaks anymore since like 2016, but they do security research. And of course, one of the kernel vulnerabilities here is by Pangu, but this one seems to be just a kernel memory read. We do have others that are more interesting. For example, the one below here says, quote, an application may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. That is exactly what we need. And this one is by Pattern F. If you remember Pattern F, we do use their stuff in the Torin jailbreak and I think Uncover uses a remade version of what Pattern F made. So that's actually great. And then we have another one here, which says, quote, a malicious application may be able to disclose kernel memory. Again, this one isn't exactly very useful for a jailbreak but it's still a kernel vulnerability. However, there is one by Pangu team that is actually quite great and it's this one below. It says, quote, a malicious application may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges and this one is a buffer overflow. So this one is actually powerful and it's again made by Pangu team. So it seems that Pangu is interested again in iOS which is definitely great. Then we have another kernel one which says copied files may not have expected file permissions. This one can be useful but not exactly for a jailbreak. Another one that can disclose kernel memory, which again is a kernel read, which we don't exactly need. But there are a couple of kernel vulnerabilities in this security log here that we can definitely use, let alone the other ones here that are for other components like IMHIO or GPU drivers or foundation and so on. Another security researcher, Gabe Series K, posted here, quote, thank you Tim Cook for these common vulnerabilities and exposure numbers. The common vulnerabilities and exposure numbers are basically these codes here, CVE 2021, 1813 and so on. Every vulnerability gets assigned a code for that. So they apparently submitted a couple of vulnerabilities and they were patched but they got a CVE code and they apparently submitted one for foundation and it says an application may be able to gain elevated privileges. That's actually quite cool. And another few that says in here processing maliciously crafted server messages may lead to heap corruption and a remote attacker may be able to cause denial of service. These aren't exactly that great for jailbreak purposes but the first one who knows it could be useful in a context. Context. They also posted some of their proof of concepts here on GitHub, but for now they only posted the Mac OS ones. Probably they will post the iOS ones too, but once the 90 day window closes. So it's great to see that they try to make them open source, that's actually great, because if they do, we can use them. So yeah, what about those? Well, if any of the kernel vulnerabilities by Pango or by Pattern F gets released, we can probably use it to update the Torin or the Uncovered Jailbreak to work with the iOS 14.4.2, which is currently signed. 14.4 14.4, 14.4 and so on. So for those of you who are already on 14.5, go ahead and downgrade right now to 14.4.2 while it's still signed. Trust me, it won't stay signed for so long. Because when these vulnerabilities get released, and they will at some point, once the iOS 14.4.2 is no longer signed, we might be able to get a jailbreak by using the kernel vulnerabilities in here. Now I'm not sure if Pengu will release their vulnerability, but people like Gabe seem to be interested in releasing them, but of course they cannot release the iOS one right now because one vulnerable iOS version is still signed and that is the 14.4.2. So as part of the responsible disclosure, they have to wait until it's no longer signed. So yeah, if you're running 14.5 and you want to jailbreak as soon as possible, go back to 14.4.2 while you still can. If you're running 14.4 or 14.4.1, you're staying on a great version so definitely stay there. So yeah, that's basically it. Thank you for watching. Pretty great news for the jailbreak community, especially for those of you who have updated past iOS 14. 
17.3, so definitely stick around. I'm gonna bring you the news as they unfold. Thank you for watching, I am Geosnow, and until the next time, peace out.